So funny way to start the day today. Yesterday, I had posted a YouTube thumbnail photo of me holding up this shirt that says, even my swag has swag. And I use the word swag in the title of the video in association with the negotiation tip that I was providing because that was the main theme. And I figured it would be funny to kind of cross the two together because this shirt was something that I had planned on mentioning that I was selling. The only thing is in the beginning of the video when I show this, I forgot to mention that I was selling it and I didn't mention it later on in the video even though I filmed a clip that actually said that. Sometimes that happens when you edit, you forget to add something in. Well, sure enough, somebody comes across the video as soon as I post it, somebody who I've never seen before in the comments section who indicates that he or she is annoyed that I use the word swag in the video. And I'm just laughing at myself because I'm thinking it's just a joke. But, you know, again, my video kind of lacked the context for somebody to really understand that. I put a comment uh, in, the, um, in the comment section. I pinned it to the top. And sure enough, Carol, the CEO of my Facebook group, the Facebook reselling resource center came in and purchased this so consistent with yesterday's theme and to make sure I don't forget to mention that I'm going to uh, list this Carol that sale was nothing but awesome so thanks so much this is a what do we got here is a Nike youth extra large so I'll make sure I get that one up too but uh, anyway uh, yesterday I filmed a bunch of clips I couldn't get everything into the video because there was just a bunch of stuff going on so you're gonna see me show some stuff in the beginning of this video from yesterday and then I'll integrate it with whatever we've got going on today. So uh, let me show you some stuff from yesterday including something else I sold from my daughter which was uh, some American Girl Doll books which she has outgrown. Let me show you them. So here we go. This is a little lot of 12 American Girl Doll books. They sold for a total of $16. Look for them at garage sales. That's where you typically find them and they'll ship out cheaply via media mail. So no sooner did I list those salt and pepper shakers that I showed you in the prior video with the handyman and the toolbox that they sold today for $25. It's uh, this set right here. I knew that this would sell fast uh, for a few reasons. Number one, uh, they are vintage. Number two, they are in excellent shape. Uh, number three, they are very hard to come by. This particular set just does not come up often at all. Uh, I saw no comparables uh, for it whatsoever. And lastly, um, all I needed is one person to come across this and say, oh, hey, that reminds me of my husband or that reminds me of my dad or my brother or whatever, and they would want to pick that up. So I had it priced at $30 and Laura Cohn offered me 25 bucks for it and I took it like that. Uh, Laura, many of you know her, uh, she has been in my Facebook group since close to the beginning, which is saying something because now we have over 18,000 members. That's the Facebook Reselling Resource Center. Uh, Laura was my first moderator uh, in the group and she still is a moderator so she's helped me a lot there and she also helps to moderate my YouTube channel and she's just super supportive overall in helping out uh, things in the primetime treasure hunter community so thank you very much Laura and for all that awesome support I definitely want to give you an overdue subscriber of the day. All right so a couple things I want to show you here this is 100 8 by 6 by 4 eBay boxes, I absolutely love these. They're great to ship out small items. So I'm gonna put these in the shed later on. Um, you could use your eBay store credit for these or just buy them straight out. They're definitely worth it. Uh, but this is the main thing that I wanna show you and this is why I have two ring lights. I really wanted to get this coat in the bright lights. I'm gonna open the door, have the natural light shining as well. And uh, these photos of the pink coat that I got at that estate sale recently for $5, it's really gonna pop when I get the white background on there and everything, it's gonna look good. Cha-Cha wears it well. So this is the first time me showing you the two ring light setup. So I'm taking another picture for a Mad Magazine lot I'm gonna post. This is a lot of 50 of them. And a lot of people ask me how I get this overhead display shot. Well, it's kind of like how I showed you when I was in the driveway taking the overhead picture of the Afghan. And right there, that's a little 
chandelier light that I've got to move to the side uh, to take this photo. But uh, basically, very simple. I just stand on a chair like that. Now, I don't recommend that for everybody. If you have balance problems, you know, if you're frail, do not do this. Um, it's a risk, and it's a risk of falling. So only do it if you have proper safety procedures in place or you know uh, that you have pretty good balance. So what would be the solution if you don't want to or can't stand on a chair or you know a little ladder or something to take an overhead picture? Well, what you could do is you could purchase a camera that would uh, affix to the uh, ceiling or to some type of overhead uh, structure and then you could take top-down photos like that. So that would be uh, definitely a much safer way uh, to do it. And I wanted to show one Mad Magazine here to Jessie Shops because I know that she loves trolls. So uh, there you go. I figured you would like that one. <laughs> All right, back in the shed, and the mission is straight ahead into that plastic tote right there. Does anyone remember what's inside? Yes, it's the Peanuts glasses. That's right, from the Camp Snoopy collection, the promo through McDonald's. I had pulled these out during my shed reorganization video, and Mary McQueen, a longtime prime timer and big Peanuts fan, had wanted me to get these listed. Uh, so I just love these old glasses with the vintage cartoon characters on them and stuff. They're just really cool. I've had these for a while. I picked them up at a private estate sale pick. Uh, there's six in total with two duplicates. I'll put them together as a lot uh, because people will buy duplicates of them in case one breaks. They were sitting in a box in my shed for over a year and then I moved the box into the shed here, but had not opened them until the shed reorganization video. So it's like I say, you know, you've got to take stuff out of boxes to be able to see them because that's what will motivate you uh, to get them listed. So I will photograph all six of those together and have them up as a listing by the time you see this. Uh, back here in salt and pepper shaker land, it's time to pull out another set. And my eyes went right to these colorful Keel Build Toucans from Belize. You can see it says Belize there right on the front of the chest. It's very difficult to find uh, vintage salt and pepper shakers from Belize or any from Belize for that matter. So uh, hopefully someone uh, from Belize uh, will be interested in those. And then over here, you can see where I moved those 8 by 6 by 4 boxes. Uh, they come in these uh, little groups of 25. Uh, so I kept one behind at Primetime Treasure Headquarters and left these three here. All right, Daisy, I got to go. You guard the fort while I'm gone, all right? Keep everything safe. I know you can do it. Give you some Mountain Dew later. So one of the places that I went to that day was the Dollar Tree. I wasn't looking for craft paper, but I wanted to show it to you because it's an option uh, for only a buck to get some wrapping paper. Although I usually get it at estate sales for next to nothing. But I was looking for a replacement, a trifold for my white backgrounds. Sometimes they get dirty. So you got to replace them every once in a while. Now, not the oak tag there and not the styrofoam pieces that you see here because these don't stand up by themselves. Now, a lot of times people can't find them because of what I'm gonna show you here, you gotta turn around, but sometimes people miss it because the brown is what's showing outwards when the flaps get turned in. But you just gotta open them up and you'll see the white there, and that gives you a lot of flexibility. They stand by themselves, I love them. Uh, this I would love too, this uh, interesting shaped bottle here, 1.25 liters of Mountain Dew. And this here is um, the, one of three trucks that drove away that day from the rescue mission. I dropped all my donations off and look how well, many were there. Well, it has been a really wow. long time since I have given anyone a full view like this of this section of Primetime Treasure Headquarters. You'd probably have to go back to my uh, Boxing Chaos video where I tried to organize and did uh, all of the uh, box madness that was going on uh, behind me. Uh, the problem is, is that over time, it started to rear its ugly head again, such that this whole section here before today was just filled with boxes, just all the way up. It was absolutely crazy. Uh, so what I did is I compressed some of them down and put them on the shelf again. 
And I also got rid of all of the priority boxes that I had down here because I barely ever use priority flat rate boxes. So those are all gonna go in the shed. I'll show them to you later. And I decided to put in stuff here that I actually use more, some ready to go boxes. A lot of them I have flattened, but I also like to have ones that are ready to go uh, in a pinch if I have to get something out fast. And that's what this section here has always been for. And I started to pile some up again uh, after I put these two in. And I said, no, no, no. If I put them in again, what's gonna happen is that it's gonna pile all up again and it's gonna get out of control. Uh, so I needed somewhere uh, to put them. So I organized this section over here. This is where I've been showing you uh, all the posters. The posters are down here now. All these comic boxes that you see here, those were all right over here. I had a big giant box here that was filled with poster tubes and those are now uh, all in a different area uh, behind a door. Uh, so, and I just made this stuff a uh, neater too. This is where I put more vertical boxes that I need for shipping, that type of stuff, where more oblong boxes go here. But I said to myself, and I, and I did show you in the past that there was a bunch of paint cans here and there's still a few left underneath there, but this section here had a whole bunch of uh, paint cans on a wood shelf. And so what I did is I took the wood shelf out, took the paint cans out, those will go too. Um, and then I just stacked the boxes up here. Now I covered some of them up just to make them look nicer, but these are like, you know, ready to go boxes that are nested within one another. So, you know, there's some smaller ones down here as well. So they're all set and ready to go when I need them. You know, there is a lot of additional uh, work to do. As you can see, I moved some stuff over to the side because Mrs. Primetime needs to get back here. Uh, that's where I put the poster tubes. Like you could still see like there's, there's just chaos here. Like this is a, a view of some of the comic boxes that I have. This is all inventory that needs to get organized. So this, this is all going to be projects. I might as well get this on tape too. Uh, there we go. I've shown you on top of the refrigerator before. This is pretty chaotic. This all has to get reorganized also. So a lot of projects that you're going to see me uh, working on over the next few months or so uh, just to get things together. All right, so I moved some things in the shed like I told you earlier. So uh, let me show you what I'm talking about. This really helped me clear up some of that space down there. It was awesome because I just walked down into that space for the first time, just like freely walking into it. And man, what an awesome feeling it was. Just I'll show you later. We'll go down there again. But um, so basically what I did is I actually found another one of these. So these eight by six by fours. Uh, remember I had loaded those uh, in here the other day. I had a pack of 100 come in. I didn't even know that I had that one uh, right up top there. Didn't even, it was just like buried under something. So this is why you have to be organized because stuff just gets lost. Um, the priority boxes, these were on the bottom shelf of all those uh, cardboard boxes. So this was taking up a lot of space. Now, there was actually more than that, more uh, priority boxes than that, but I just took out enough to fill that space there from top to bottom. And then anything else is just extra. I'm just gonna give it back to the post office because reality is I don't even really use those boxes much at all. I mean, barely ever. So I'm gonna see what happens with these like over the summer. And if I don't wind up using them, then I'm just gonna keep a few and just give the rest back to the post office because then it's just wasting space in here. So I would just kind of hang on to a few of them for just in case purposes. Uh, so we'll run a little test on that uh, throughout the summer. Um, over here, uh, that's not exactly new, but I moved it into here. That's that big Sizzlers uh, set uh, through Hot Wheels. You remember I picked it up uh, at the estate sale, got a great deal on that. So I just haven't messed with it yet and listed it, but uh, hopefully we'll do that soon. So, uh, but that was taking up a lot of space uh, down at Primetime Treasure Headquarters and was making it difficult for me to walk around down there. So uh, now I've got these bigger objects in here. And as you can see, this place is starting to fill up more and more and more. Uh, so that's good. As Mrs. Primetime keeps reminding me, this is why I got a shed. So clear some of the stuff out from where I am mainly working so I have more space. And more space just gives you uh, more of a sense of just 
freedom and it's just much less stressful. So uh, that's the plan to keep working on that and um, you know, we'll keep chugging along. And a little personal moment here. My daughter and I made some strawberry muffins together. They're absolutely delicious. And it was good to just put things down for a little bit and focus on doing something together like this. All right, so for the second straight night, we are ending off with a comic-related sale signed by artist Billy Tucci. Last night, it was the redhead print that I showed you, uh, Grim Fairy Tales number 28, the Ugly Duckling one. This one's a little bit different. If you haven't seen this before, this is called a sketchbook. And it's sort of like it sounds. Uh, this page on the front, this cover, is an original sketch by the artist. You could see down there, it's a limited edition, number two of 100. And you could see right over here, it's signed by the artist. Sometimes the sketch is colored in, sometimes not. When you open this up, what you're going to see though are not original sketches, you're going to see print sketches. Uh, they're collections of uh, works by the artist. Now, if they were original sketches inside, it would sell for a lot more than this did, which is $17. Also, the artist is going to play a role in terms of how much people are going to pay for it. So if this was, for example, George Perez, who I've talked about before and I've shown you uh, many um, higher priced art prints that have sold uh, from him, uh, or if it was someone like Todd McFarlane, very famous for uh, Spider-Man and Spawn, that would sell for a lot more money. And that's no disrespect to Billy Tucci. He does have a following, uh, but just not as big as those guys and some of the others. Now, uh, Billy Tucci is uh, most known, a lot of people always tell me they're trying to learn more about comics and comic characters when they come here. Uh, this character you should be aware of, a char the character's name is She. Um, Billy Tucci is uh, responsible for her. So um, how much she's going to sell for and you know what types of items she's associated with are gonna sell for, it really all depends. Depends on the comic book, depends on um, the item, sometimes there's there's trading cards, for example, of hers that I've sold. This calendar, I've actually had in my eBay store for a long time, and it's sealed, 1997, just 10 bucks if anyone's interested in it. It's just been sitting there for a while. Um, now, over here, you could see I have another stack of uh, Mad Magazines right there. So that's uh, a lot of 50. I'm glad to have that space filled up because that's all stuff that's listed in my store and I don't like to have big gaps there because I always want to have stuff that's constantly being posted and, and, and moved out. So um, of all the stuff that I showed you uh, today uh, and yesterday, because we covered kind of a two day span here, this by far is what I am the most proud of. So finally, I could turn that corner and walk into an area where I have some open floor space. I don't have to just kind of, you know, slide my way through boxes and hope that I don't tip things over. And trust me, many times I did tip things over. And that's just stressful when boxes are falling down all over the place. So at a certain point, despite how busy I am with all these different projects and stuff going on, I just had to finally say, all right, enough is enough. And I just got to get this, you know, fixed up. And, you know, same with over here. Like I just had a, I just eventually had to clear that stuff out. I've talked about for a while how to get those paint cans cleared out of there. Now they're out of there. Uh, but as you can see, I mean, there's just a lot of stuff that still needs to be uh, organized. There's just inventory all over the place. And so I'm looking forward to documenting the process of how this is all going to get uh, fixed up. So, uh, you know, keep following along and, um, you know, come along for the journey, come along for the fun. I'm looking for your, uh, you know, your help in allowing me to do that. I mean, for example, people who have come by and have, picked out a poster has helped me eliminate a lot of these posters from here uh, that I've been trying to get uh, get listed for a while. So uh, we're going to do that. I have lots of fun ideas ahead. And so uh, I look forward to you all taking part in it. Uh, with that, I'm going to sign off for tonight and uh, I hope that you enjoy uh, the content. If so, make sure you like, comment and subscribe. I'll see you back at the next one, everyone. Take care.